Welcome back to eSIM Studios. As you know, the launch of the OnePlus 15 was just released, right? And the more and more reviews I see of this device getting hot, overheating, when pushed to its limits, has me a little concerned for the upcoming Samsung Galaxy S26 Ultra series. As we mentioned last week, the S26 Ultra is going to get the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 worldwide, and that could cause a issue for Samsung in the future. Or it could be a good problem for Samsung, depending on how you look at it, in regards to their Exynos CPUs, their in-house Exynos CPUs. Now, hear me out. So one of the biggest draws for the upcoming Samsung Galaxy S26 Ultra is the inclusion of an extremely powerful processor, that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 chip I would just mention. This chip is being positioned as a major advantage and key selling point, promising to deliver top tier performance for the most demanding users. However, this incredible power might come with a significant and potentially damaging liability. You see, the core problem is pretty simple. The Snapdragon 80 Elite Gen 5 runs dangerously hot under stress. This isn't just a theoretical problem and or concern. As I mentioned, OnePlus 15, one of the first phones to use this chip already suffers from overheating issues when running intensive benchmark tests and or gaming. To be fair, for most day-to-day -day operations, its cooling system does its job fairly well, but for power users, the warning signs are clear. To understand why, we need to look at its power consumption, which is it's substantially higher than its main competitor, the iPhone. In the Apple A19 Pro CPU that runs in the iPhone 17 series. So get this, so power consumption for the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 running in the OnePlus 15 draws 19.5 watts of power. That compared to the Apple A19 Pro, which only draws 12.1 watts of power. These numbers reveal that under heavy stress, the Snapdragon can consume up to an astonishing 22 watts of power under high stress. To put that in perspective, that's an amount typically seen in Ultrabook class CPUs of laptops, which require dedicated cooling fans. More strikingly, a high-end gaming laptop with an Intel Core and i9 processor consumes around 15 watts at idle, meaning that the S26 Ultra's chip under high load could draw more power than a gaming laptop CPU that is barely working. Despite this, Samsung's solution for the S26 Ultra is reportedly just a 1.2 times larger vapor chamber than the S25 Ultra. This daunting thermal challenge, however, may be exactly the uh, opening Samsung needs to prove the value of its own in-house Exynos technology. Samsung's in-house Exynos technology, you heard me right, the Exynos 2600. If the Snapdragon's thermal issues persist, it creates the perfect opportunity for Samsung's own processor, the 2600, to shine. This in-house chip is built on a foundation of newer, more efficient technology that directly addresses overheating issues. The Exynos 2600 uses the GAA gate all around transistors, which are far better at preventing energy leaks for the user. This directly translate into a more powerful and more efficient chip that generates less waste heat. It's built on a more modern two nanometer process. The chip is designed with features like heat pass block, and has already achieved major gains in efficiency and thermal controls to the tone of around 30% better directly tackling the overheating issues at its source. This technological focus is a key part of Samsung's broader business strategy. 
Despite the thermal concerns, Samsung plans to launch the high-end S26 Ultra globally with the Snapdragon chip. The company's in-house Exynos 2600, however, will play a crucial role in the base S26 and S26 Plus models, driven by a powerful financial incentive. For these models, Samsung's mobile division can purchase the in-house Samsung Exynos 2600 chip at a 30% discount per unit when compared to the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. This helps the company improve its profit margins on its highest volume of phones. Ultimately, Samsung's long-term goal is to prove its technology. If the Exynos 2600 performs well without the thermal issues plaguing its competitor, it could make a compelling case for Samsung to rely entirely on its own chipsets in the future. This would give the company's greater control over its products and a stronger competitive edge in the market. For anyone considering the next generation of Samsung phones, the central conflict is clear. The S26 Ultra promises groundbreaking performance with the Snapdragon chip, but it comes with a serious risk of overheating that could throttle that very performance. Meanwhile, Samsung's own Exynos chip featured in the other S26 models stands as a promising homegrown alternative. Its success could not only solve the overheating problem for those phones, but also pave the way for a future where all Galaxy devices are powered by Samsung's own more efficient technology, Samsung Exynos CPUs. Tell me what you think down in the comments. Let me know, is this overheating a concern of yours? It is mine, big time. Y'all know my S25 Ultra when it was first launched had major overheating issues. Now One UI 8 solved those issues, but I think it took Samsung a few months to issue One UI 8. It took Samsung a few monthly updates to kind of fine tune the thermal throttling, the power of the Snapdragon 8 Elite CPU that's in these S25 series devices. But I'm very concerned with this upcoming S26 Ultra. And I love these CPUs, but I mentioned a year ago, these things are, 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 are a freaking beast and they're, they're almost overperforming. And I kind of wish they would take a step back, so to speak, maybe dial it down a bit just because I don't want my phones to get hot. Is that too much to ask for? Maybe Samsung has its own future in its own hands. Maybe it is Exynos, right? Now, I, I have major concerns with that as well. Look, we've all used Exynos CPUs in the past, and let's, let's be honest, they've sucked, right? And they've dealt with overheating issues in the past. But I honestly think Samsung has something on their hands here with this two nanometer process, this two nanometer node. It's ahead of its time, and they've really dealt with the overheating issue in the, the heat transfer that these new CPUs uh, face, the heat pass block. I think they have something up their sleeve. And boy, I bet Samsung is really, really betting on their future because a couple years from now, they could be sitting in Apple's seat where Apple creates their own phones and creates their own CPUs. Or like Google, although it's not much to brag about, creates their own phones, creates their own CPUs. Samsung wants to desperately pull their own seat up at that table and be one of the members. And I think they got it. But time will tell. Are you concerned? I am. Let me know in the comments. Peace.